All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of the Sean Gill podcast. I'm Sean Gill, CPA. I'm a certified public accountant, and this is my co-host slash guest. Kevin Breeze, great to be here today. (laughs) So he already introduced himself as being a certified public accountant. I am a full-time content creator. I did graduate from college in 2017 with a degree in business, but I'll tell you what, haven't really touched that degree a whole lot since graduating, and I've kind of just over the years crafted an online business focused on content marketing, and we distribute our content on a variety of different platforms, but we'll get to that a little bit more, I'd imagine, a little bit later on in the show. Yeah, but that's actually a good topic. So we both, that's how we met, is we both went to ASU here in Arizona, Arizona State University together, Graduated in slightly different years, but we started in the same year. And my career is actually based on my education. Of course, when I actually did my bachelor's, that isn't what I ended up doing. And yours is completely different. Like you probably didn't even need to go to college at all. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in my situation, I didn't have any debt coming out of it because thankfully I did manage to get quite a few scholarships. So maybe if I had debt when I graduated, I would have actually regretted it. Yeah. But, you know, I guess, you know, it was a good experience, no debt going out of it. And, uh, you know, I'm in a good situation right now. So I'm satisfied with it. Yeah. Which actually brings up a good point, which is you, you actually finesse the, the scholarship system in a way, like, well, not in a, not in a, not in a negative way, but I mean like you following all rules, you ethically, Kind of shifted your study. Yeah. So basically, when I started off, I I did actually intend on having a traditional career, you know, where you get the degree and then you get into your job and then you grow from there. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but there was a scholarship opportunity available for a particular major. So that's kind of what made me go the route that I did go. So I kind of let the scholarships kind of control my destiny when it comes to what program I wanted to do just because I was pretty open to doing anything. But then when I actually did graduate, I really just couldn't get my mind off of making a full time from content and going the independent route is what worked out best for me. Yeah. like So like what I, I guess the takeaway from that would be that you basically saw like what opportunities were out there and you kind of shifted your goal because you don't have like a super set goal and you shifted right. it to kind of take advantage of money that was out there, which is interesting because I feel like there's a lot of people that can do that in their actual career, which is like if you don't have something that you're really into or like a strong passion for anything, mm-hmm. would you recommend that people just kind of shift where they're going based on the opportunities that are out there if they don't have any particular, I guess, like strong interest in anything? Yeah, I mean, maybe this sounds a little bit vague, but specific at the same time. But I hear a lot of people online, on Twitter and elsewhere, they'll say, hey, you've got to go for your passion. You've got to Mm -hmm. go that route. And yes, that is good. But at the same time, sometimes people don't know what their actual passion is. They might think they're passionate in something specific. And then they go that route and, you know, they might enjoy it. But sometimes there are opportunities in different ventures, niches, I guess, to make Mm -hmm. it a little bit broader that you might not think you're into, but if you give it a chance, then you will actually, you know, you could potentially be into it, if that makes sense. Like, for example, for me, the primary niche Mm -hmm. that I focus on with my content is budget smartphones under $300. Now, if you would have asked me three years ago, about that specific niche to focus on when it comes to content, I would have said, oh, it's you know, it's so boring. Like, yeah. you know, these boring lower end devices, like why would I want to cover, like that's boring. Like yeah. I wouldn't cover that, right? Because it's not interesting. But when well, the, the reality is, in. yeah, well that, so there's two things. Once I started to become an expert in that specific niche, uh, which I ended up going that route because I had a recommendation from a friend who said, hey, maybe you should try this niche. It's not as uh, congested with other people into it, mostly because it does appear to be a boring niche. But as (laughs) I started to focus on that niche more and more, 
it, it got more interesting as time went on. And then it also ended up being a lucrative niche to be in as well, which we can talk about a little bit later. So with those two factors, it ended up being a success. So I guess my point is the main takeaway from all of this is that when people say, chase your passions, follow your passions, mm -hmm. there might be things that you could potentially be passionate about in the future <clears throat> that you're not even passionate about right now. So really, if you just keep an open mind and yeah. uh, you know, kind of dip your feet, try different things, then things that you think might have not been interesting could end up being interesting in the future. Yeah, like I feel like we have good takes on that because so you did that and I'm kind of been, I've been a part of the other school of thought, which was like, no, if I don't really like it, I don't want to waste my life doing it. Yeah. And whenever I pursued that train of thought, I didn't really get anywhere till I finally settled down on um, going into accounting after I, I got a degree in finance. I worked in like a little bit of sales and a little bit of banking realized like I didn't like this that I need to find something else to do because my long-term goal has always been at some point I want to have like my own operation right I want to have my mm -hmm. own business but I was always like I don't know what my business is going to be I just want to be passionate about it I got to really sure. love what I'm doing that whole right almost cursed that whole uh concept mm -hmm. but then when I kind of decided like I need to I'm like forced into like a decision because remember when we there was a point at one point in 2017 me and Kevin both quit our jobs about... Within like, like the same two-week period. Yeah, because yeah. we were both just sick of whatever we were doing. Yeah. And we like you kind of had an idea of wanting to work with content. And I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I just knew mm -hmm. I wanted to do something different that I liked and that made more money and had some sort of business opportunity to do it. I eventually settled on going to school for accounting because I was a finance major in college. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I've never been super passionate about accounting, but I was always good at it at ASU. Like I was... Mm -hmm when we were in accounting classes, a lot of people didn't understand what was going on. To me, it was pretty like logical, like puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. But I was still kind of like bummed out that I didn't have anything that I was passionate about Sure. that I could do for money. And then going deeper into accounting, I picked my niche, which was tax. And I'm going to eventually I need to pick another niche in there, like a certain kind of mm -hmm. industry or something. But going into that, I was like, you know, at least tax is kind of interesting and there's some value add there I can do for people. Maybe once I get more into it, I'll kind of like I open up my mind and was like, once I become more of an expert on it, maybe I'll enjoy it more. Sure. And then I went to my master's for tax, which was hard as hell. Mm -hmm. And I was like, maybe I won't enjoy this. But then I kind of just stuck with it. Mm -hmm. And like, sure enough, like you said, is I guess as I become more of an expert, even though I'm not some crazy expert, because I'm still pretty young in my career. Right. But I know mm -hmm. what I'm doing. As I went on, it got more interesting. Mm -hmm. And now it's, I'm like, I'm committed to it. And I'm seeing the potential of to like make a lot of money doing it. And mm -hmm. suddenly I'm, it's like a manufactured passion, which is like, once you get good at something and you get a little bit interested in it and you see the opportunity to make mm -hmm. like a living from it, mm -hmm. you can kind of make yourself passionate about it. But whenever I just chased pure passion, that never really led anywhere. Cause I would get like really yeah. excited about one thing, do it. And then completely like get bored of it and jump mm -hmm. ship to another idea that I was really passionate about, allegedly passionate about. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting because on the spectrum of something that you're passionate about and then the other side of the spectrum where it's something that makes a ton of money, mm -hmm. it's like both of those extremes <clears throat> kind of suck. You know, for example, my first J-O-B out of <laughs> Wait, why college do you call it a J -O -B? Tell just me. over broke. Uh, sadly. They're barely paying you. Right. But so my first job out of college was selling copy machines. And <laughs> the reason why I took that job is because in their description of the job, they say, oh, well, if you're really motivated and you really hustle, you, you might make 150 or 100K, you know, mm -hmm. some good money. So I thought, OK, well, it could be so boring, so miserable, but at least if I'm making good money. Why not, right? You can put up how, with how bad could it be? Yeah. Well, again, there's a reason why they have to pay these people that much for that kind of thing <laughs> is because it's so miserable and so awful that you know, if they paid a normal amount of money, nobody would nobody want to do it, yeah. right? And basically that that's an example of the extreme part of the spectrum where I'm just doing it just for the money and i don't care at all about the craft i don't care at all about anything related to the tasks involved and i'm just going for the money 
Whereas I suppose if you wanted to do the other extreme where it's something that where there's like no chance of making any money from it. Where you're like a starving artist or something. Yeah. No, I mean, there's, you can make money nowadays with the internet on your art, but there's definitely some stuff. Like there's, I know people that like have really niche interests mm -hmm. and they try to pursue them and like there's just no market for it. Mm -hmm. So it's like you could be that guy where you're basically like. Well, homeless. here's an example. Maybe you really like painting, right? Yeah. And the business model that you make is, oh, I make a painting, I sell it. I make a painting, I sell it. Well, how about instead of that, you teach painting lessons. You make an a online course on, course on painting. Yeah. You make an ebook about painting. You do some sort of live event where you're painting in front of other people. I don't know how I, you know, <laughs> I don't know how interesting that might be. Yeah. But the point is, is that. You want to get creative with the ways, like you can monetize your passion, but you do have to get very creative about how the actual business is structured. And you also, yeah, just because you can monetize a certain passion doesn't mean you need to only pursue your passions. Like, because like to what you were saying is like, I've had um, like my dad, right? He has a bunch of different business opportunities that come to him because he's like a successful guy. Mm-hmm. And he'll be like, yo, this, I know a guy that's doing this business. They have seven locations and they're making like, he'll give me numbers. And I'm like, yeah, it's a lot of money. But like, I don't care about at all about like babysitting. And it's like, it'll be some sort of like home mm -hmm. care business that's making a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. So like there's things out there that make a bunch of money. But if you completely just have zero interest in it, mm -hmm. you also won't stick to that and you won't be good at that. But then if you try to pursue your passions, I can't make you any money. Mm -hmm. You won't have any money. So you kind of need to like meet in the middle which is like, I'm a little bit interested in it. Right. And it can make a bunch of money. Right. I think that's like the best thing to like, like a good combination of stuff to go for. Like with sure. content, like you know that there's people out there making millions from content mm -hmm. and you like, um, you like making content. You like, maybe you do like phones. Maybe you don't prefer budget phones or something, but mm -hmm. like there's a combination that can work out, but there's, there's so many things out there you could do. If you just want to make money, you could force yourself into becoming like an investment banker and just hate your life. Right. But you probably won't be a good investment banker because you don't care about it at all. Right. Which is like with me, maybe if I like really applied myself, yeah, I could have 10 locations of some kind of child daycare service that makes me millions of dollars a year. Mm -hmm. But if I hate it, like how far am I really going to, am I going to stick to it when it gets tough? And am I going to like try my best to be good at it? Probably mm -hmm. not. Because at the end of the day, like I don't care. Like I would never think about that thing outside of the money. Sure. Yeah. I mean, another, another example would be David Dobrik, one of the biggest mm. content creators online, one of the biggest vloggers on YouTube. Obviously he makes a bunch of money. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anyone's doubting that. Yeah. But for example, like, Oh, why would I do what I, why would I do what I do? Wouldn't I want to be doing what David Dobrik does? Well, look, it looks like he has a fun life. I'm not saying that he doesn't, but well, I don't think I have the energy <laughs> to do those vlogs every day and do all that. So the point is, is that- Dude, I've listened to his podcast yeah. and he talks about what it's like to make them. Yeah. And his life sounds like a hell. Like, yeah, like I you don't, have like, to be all on board with that lifestyle as well. Like if, yeah. if I made as much as he makes, I still wouldn't want to do that, that right. stuff every day. Right. Like the way he talks about it is like he gets three, four hours of sleep a night, yeah. spends a bunch of money making each vlog. Like there's so much coordination. Like it's a lot of stress, he says, right? Sure. That's why he kind of retired from it. Yeah, but some break but if you think break. yeah, whatever, whichever one it is, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but like if you're just like, oh, well, content like that kind of content makes a lot of money. I'm gonna go do that. You will mm -hmm. not have the energy or the. I think grit is probably the best word for it. You won't have the grit to work as hard as he does sure. to make that stuff because you don't like it. Yeah, just like. I don't know if you want to become like an investment banker. It's like, I don't right. have the grit to go through all that schooling. Even yeah. Or another example, like content creators who, you know, their content yeah. is like cinematography and stuff like that. Like yeah. really high end filming, you know, those people that do that, they really enjoy it. I don't, yeah. I review or I record all my content, all my reviews, all that stuff. I record all my content with a galaxy S 10 and I do it because, literally a phone. Yeah. Right. I do that for multiple reasons. One, I kind of want to make a point that you can grow a audience with low end gear. But Which, the other, by the way, how many, just for some social proof, how many subscribers do you have on YouTube right now? Oh, uh, I think I have like 115,000. 
honestly, I don't even care about the subscribers. I don't, you know, I it's a cool vanity metric, I suppose. And, yeah. and I guess having more subscribers technically will allow the algorithm to better show my content. But at the end of the day, I'm more interested in, in engagement. And then also, you know, for other, all aspects of the business revenue as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll be completely honest here. If I suddenly wasn't making any revenue from my content, I wouldn't be making any content. So mm, a lot of people, bars. again, like I'm not, I'm not saying maybe these people that say this are being genuine about it. I'm not sure. But when people say, oh, you know, I would still make the content even if I wasn't making any money from it. Well, Let's see. All right, fine. Yeah. Turn off your turn like, off your monetization. Yeah. No uh, stop charging for your products and uh, let's see how your work ethic goes. I'm guessing it's going to take a nosedive. Yeah. So like, I wouldn't do any tax for no money. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like I yeah. like no. D is it fun when I want to do it? Yeah. But it's way more fun when I know I have mm -hmm. X amount of dollars coming after I finish it. Right. You know, if if you told me, hey, if you do this tax right here, you're going to get ten thousand dollars. Suddenly, I'm really passionate about doing it very well. Mm -hmm. and getting it done and delivering a great experience. If you tell me, hey, spend 15 hours on this, uh, whatever this tax project, this accounting project, and you're going to get a um, McChicken out of it, I'm going <laughs> to tell you to like screw off, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, I, I just feel like, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with being completely honest about your intentions. Yeah. And in fact, I think it's worse to pretend that you're just doing it just to, I mean, look, let me backtrack here. I'm not just doing it like, yes, the mm. money part is the biggest motivator. Of course, also seeing that the content I make is actually impactful. It is helpful mm -hmm. to people. I get emails, I get comments, I get DMs all the time from people saying, hey, yeah. I watched your video or I've been watching your videos for years, you know, whether it's one video or you someone that, you know, watches all my uploads. We might've just cracked the formula. What's I that? think you just touched on like the formula is, are you somewhat interested in stuff? Can you make a good, a great living to, from it? And is there some part of it that's at least a little bit fulfilling? Mm -hmm. That's probably like the three things you need for a great career. Well, that's one of, one of my favorite content creators, Sean Cannell, who I met at the NAB conference in Las Vegas last year, his slogan for his business, which he does a content marketing business, by the way. So mm -hmm. I've tried to kind of so we'll mimic his business style. Right here. But again, his name is Sean Cannell. He runs a company called Think Media. But anyway, his oh, slogan. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Uh, his slogan is income, influence, and impact. Mm. Kind of that trifecta of those three is really what I think would drive someone as a content creator. You want the income. Because look, if you're going to spend X amount of time on something, it better be something well, not, that's... And not even content creators. Just yeah, like anything, anybody, any anything career. Anything for that matter, yeah. yeah. You know, the income part is very important because we all have bills to pay, <laughs> whether it's <laughs> rent, food, retirement savings, just like all that lifestyle. stuff. Yeah. Having a, like, yeah. Nobody enjoys having a poor lifestyle. Like, like I don't think so. So yeah. like, right. I don't know how amazing this looks on camera right now, but the fact that we have these, like I have these microphones in my apartment and we just got these stools yeah. and this little, whatever you want to call it thing today and these lights and mm -hmm. stuff. I like making content, right? But if I had to do this in the dark and it looked awful and I was recording on just my phone audio, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't do content, right? Cause that's a bad, like that would be mm -hmm. worse for my lifestyle. If I had to live in a one bedroom dump somewhere I'm not going to be happy. Like, you know, no matter sure. how amazing my career is, like if I'm fulfilled, yeah. but if, I mean, at a bare minimum, having a little bit of extra money to spend could, not being could make out. the difference of you living in a good area where it's safe or a bad area where, you know, you might not be so safe. So and that's stressed. at a bare minimum, you know, yeah. on a hierarchy of needs, like that's yeah. probably the most essential need is a safe place to live enough food but it also doesn't hurt to be and, able to do stuff you want like build a studio in your apartment well yeah because you're investing in your future with with the equipment yeah. yo sab well. can you uh check the uh screensavers on on the yeah can you check that real quick just wiggle the mouse around yeah just want to make sure it didn't stop recording nope. oh oh we lit okay sab's our friend off camera yeah you guys thank you to our assistant off camera can't do it without him <laughs> our friend sure. slash I guess unpaid intern slash production assistant slash everything. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, getting back homie. to where we're at, the income influence and impact income. No, I don't think anyone can argue against income being important because we live in a society where there are bills to be paid. 
Influence. Facts. Influence is, well, you can, well, okay, tell me, why is influence important to you? Being, you mean, I suppose influence and impact are kind of similar, but I think influence do you, is more Do you mean like, like more like respect for what you're doing? I don't know exactly how he defines it, but I think... So you're a fake fan? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, fine. But no, I'm just kidding. I'm just, so kidding. I, I'm just talking shit. You, no, I, yeah, so... I don't, you know, influence and impact, I suppose, are similar. I think when he says influence, he means like motivating others to also I, okay. be the best that they can be. I will say. And then I think impact is more of just the general impact on like your community and, yeah. and things like that, you know, doing charity activities. I will say but, that yeah, go ahead when, I think it's harder to get that in a lot of careers, but if you can find a way to get it, which is actually one of the reasons I want to do this, right, mm -hmm. is I, so I used to on my Instagram stories, I used to sometimes just post like a motivational like story because I was like in a mm -hmm. great mood. And then I eventually, um, I had a one-on-one -on -one call with the, I guess client, it was like, a, it was a free call that I did like a year and a half ago. And that um, girl actually DM'd me, I told you guys about this like a week or two ago, telling me how she thinks about that conversation we had like every day or something or a lot, like mm -hmm. often, and how it's helped her kind of prioritize her goals in life and stuff based on her finances. And like that made my day. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever had, like I haven't felt, I don't want to say I haven't felt that good, but I haven't had that kind of same fulfillment mm -hmm. from anything else. There's something where somebody tells you like, yo, you really helped my life. Yeah. And like, I was like taking notes when you were talking, that does hit different. Like you do feel sure. kind of like, a, oh wow. Like, yes, yeah, so I would dope. say impact. <laughs> that's more of like, that would fall more under the impact category. Yeah. But there's then, a little bit of influence yeah. where you know somebody's influence. actually listening to your ideas and they're right. Which is like what we're doing with this. Like if this, yeah. if some, if somebody had showed me this podcast, even not that this is like the most amazing podcast episode ever. It's it's probably really like I mean, this unstructured. This is the pilot episode, really. Yeah, like yeah. this is probably pretty unstructured. But if somebody had showed this to me when I was 17, deciding on like my major in college to go, like when I was going to go to college, I probably would have made a couple different decisions that would have saved me a year of school or something. You know, sure. Like if I had thought about, hey, like chasing your passions is not the best idea, but chasing money isn't the best idea, but you need like boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. That would have significantly probably impacted the the course of my life over the next like five, six years. You know what I mean? Sure. And that like that would have been amazing. So like this is going to influence somebody if they see it eventually. Yeah. You know, that's what, one reason we're doing this too, other than like marketing yourself and your own business interests and all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, also when it comes to, you know, your situation, your current situation, at least when it comes to, you know, providing CPA services, mm -hmm. the impact of that is that you are saving, ideally, you know, you're saving people money. I mean, you're yeah, finding there's ways a value there. that, yeah, you're providing value so that people can save <clears throat> money and use that money that they're saving to invest in themselves. So yeah, that's the impact. That's the impact. And then, you know, providing also on top of that education to people, making them more aware of just even basic financial education. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the influence aspect, I suppose. So I, I yeah, feel like we're good. kind of, I kind of, uh, that whole income impact and influence thing. Like I pretty much just, you know, jacked that from yeah. Think Media and Sean Cannell, but, but it's, it's true. Yeah, it's true. I mean, we're pushing forward you know, a true idea. Yeah, so I, yeah, I think like that's said, great advice. And you know, whether it's him or Gary V or Pat Flynn, all, those are some of my favorite. Kevin yeah. David, I like Grant good Cardone. You know, I Grant like Grant Cardone, uh, Bradley, Ed you know, Sure, every one of these gurus has their pros and cons. But at the end of the day, if you just take little nuggets of information from each one, and hopefully for everyone watching or listening, you know, they take some nuggets from what we have to offer as well. Yeah, it, kind of that. Um, that combination of all of that, you know, curate it, curate that info in the way that best suits your life and your goals to ideally help you go to the next level. Yeah, because I've definitely had that experience where I yeah. found somebody online mm -hmm. and something they said just completely like blew my brain mm -hmm. and changed the way I live the rest of my life. Yeah. And also, I got to point out as well that there are people <clears throat> who are in different niches where maybe they're not a guru is like their full occupation but they also give key, that's like, the best kind like, of like uh, like russ for example yeah nav these are two uh you know rappers. very popular rappers but they will in their music you know they'll they'll mention things that are tidbits of yeah. knowledge and 
things that you can kind Russ of Russ does grasp. a great job of that because he'll yeah, specifically on mention media, Russ on uh, Russ on Twitter. Yeah, Russ on Twitter. Yeah, Russ explain that book. a little bit. Uh, explain what Russ's Twitter. You know how. Oh yeah, so Russ goes. like Russ. So for those of you that don't know anything about Russ, he's a successful rapper that is independent, and he basically he built his own music career by himself and he made mm -hmm. a lot of smart business decisions that are typically not made by people in the music industry right so russ is constantly tweeting up to he'll tweet in general but stuff that can help his peers mm -hmm. make more money live like less stressful lives mm -hmm. like have more control over their careers and he just goes out of his way to tweet it he's not getting paid to tweet nope but because of content and marketing, he's not worried about people taking his ideas and yeah, he wants taking his people lane. To help people well yeah i'll mention that in, in a second as well but yeah, so like it's also content marketing though because mm -hmm. you might hate Russ's music, but if you retweet his tweet that has some great advice that can help you live a better life, somebody else might find his music because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, who's this Russ guy that just showed up mm -hmm. on my timeline? And also if you kind of explain your whole formula to how you are or how you got to where you're at, it kind of, it, it gives you a bit more credibility as well in the sense that mm, people, yeah. you know, they see where you're at right now you know, in stage Z, I suppose, but they don't know how you got from A, to, a Z. to Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reality is, if you explain <clears throat> how you got from A to Z, 99.9% .9 of people are not going to take that information and do anything with it. Yeah. Well, that's the same way you market like done so, for you services. Huh? It's the same yeah. way you would market like done for you services. Like if you wanted me to do your taxes, I could tell you, you know what would be the best thing for you to, yeah. to do? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you're just like, oh, oh I'm like, thanks for boom, telling me. Like, yeah, thanks for telling me. Like, after you explained your process, yeah, I don't want to even do that. So let me pay you to yeah. do it for me instead. Yeah, and then you know? I would. So that's then, yeah. So if back you, to if the you original explain, formula, yeah. though, if mm -hmm. you if I explain that to you and you pay me to do it, let's mm -hmm. say you give me like a good wage that I'm motivated by. Like let's say you're like, yo, here's five thousand dollars. Just handle that for me. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, I'm feeling very passionate about doing taxes at that moment, mm -hmm. right? Because I just made five thousand dollars, and then I'm gonna be more motivated to do a good job at my at my work. Yeah, and knowing that I'm helping you like save money and take stress out of your life makes me mm -hmm. feel good. Sure. So it's like the perfect trifecta. So it all like kind of mm -hmm. comes back together. Yeah. Or if it, or for example, I don't do a whole lot of like specific client work necessarily at the moment, maybe in the future. But if I explain like, Hey, look to make this piece of content, I have to do this, this, that, that, and this is how I do it. And like, this is all the research I have to do as well. And like, I've also been working on this for five, six years to get to this point. <clears throat> that's going to result in the client definitely deciding that, okay, yeah, we're not going to do that on our own. We're going to have you do it for us because <coughs> we don't want to put in that work, like, which is fine. You know, yeah. it, it, but the transparency is great because it does help other people decide like, oh, is it worth it for them to do it themselves? Or is it better for them to outsource that as well? So maybe that's a little all over the place. I mean, I could definitely kind of narrow that. I mean, there's different types of teaching. It's like, are you teaching your clients to show them what you do or, or, you know, is, are you offering this information in a paid course? Like what I have courses already. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make more courses in the future. So I feel like in general, you know, those are different things, but yeah, in general, it kind of overlaps. Yeah. Well, I was also going to just say, I just realized in general that this has been a very unorganized podcast episode because as soon as we started recording, I realized I didn't even look at my notes app of ideas. Right, right. And I also just realized I'm still wearing my t-shirt from earlier. I wanted That's to look okay. cool on my podcast. Like, yeah, it's not a big deal, but yeah, just full transparency because we're one taking all of these. Yeah. I wanted to look cool and I didn't. And I'm in a sweatshirt cool. and you're not. And I yeah, and I'm in shorts, yeah. but we're in the same place. Well, Arizona yeah. is a weird state, <laughs> by the way. So... When the sun goes down in the winter time, it is cold. It's going to be like 40 degrees. Yeah, right now, yeah, but during the day, it's like, oh, it's kind of a little too warm for, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So, I mean. But, but anyway, yeah. uh, so. Been a good discussion, though. Been a good discussion. I think we should probably wrap this first episode up. I do apologize because I do realize now, kind of thinking out loud, that we probably were really unorganized in our topics, which it'll be more organized in the future. This is our first episode. Yes, yeah, so the So we're also testing a lot of the equipment and stuff. Sure. But I think we could wrap it all up and saying because we touched I on think like the whole theme of this was it's like college you know, do you career? chase the money do you chase the passion and what we've both found is that it has to be kind of a hybrid yeah. yeah like yeah. most things in life you kind of need a little right. bit of both there's no yeah. you can't really live on the extremes you kind of mm -hmm. and also because we did touch on college so it's kind of this is probably a good episode for anybody that's in college right now slash graduating sooner has just graduated 
because you know we talk like we talked about the impact of education versus mm -hmm. money your passions impact everything so it was kind of all over the place but i feel like at the same time we tied it back together but we will be mm -hmm. more organized in the future on the next episode of the sean gill podcast the sean gill cpa podcast which what do you want i don't know i don't know about the legal ramifications this is, this is of the uh, cp in the title or are you editing this out no we're one take oh, okay. so whatever say, say like, whatever you want okay well anyway this is the pilot <laughs> episode so you know yeah that's all I got. Yeah, it was dope. Yeah. Uh, let me come up with a sign off. So thanks for watching. Uh, make sure or you listening. or listening or listening wherever you're listening. We're all available on all DSPs. Hopefully I got to figure that out. But subscribe, you know, favorite it, like it, whatever. Share it with other people. I need to hear mm -hmm. about this. Leave comments if you can. I don't know what platform you're watching this on. I'm Sean Gill CPA. This is Kevin, Kevin Breeze. Breeze. And Pleasure to be here. And we'll catch you next time on episode two or three or wherever we are. Peace. Have a great day. That too.